Multi-level marketing companies, or MLMs, rightfully get a fair bit of criticism in the news, across social media, and even in social groups that are aware of their less than upstanding business tactics. However, despite this almost universal bad reputation, multi-level marketing companies have grown in size year on year, bringing in an ever larger pool of unsuspecting victims. This reality flies in the face of what the critics often say about such schemes, which is that they are fundamentally unstable pyramid schemes that are mathematically guaranteed to fail. If that was the case, then this now decades-old industry, filled with decades-old companies, is sure taking a long time to live out that apparent certainty. So, were the critics wrong about this one? Well, as regular viewers of the channel may know, I hate videos that drag out a simple question unnecessarily. So the short answer is no, they are not wrong about the industry as a whole. But they do get a lot wrong about their day-to-day -day operations, and this public misunderstanding may actually be key to explaining how this industry keeps on growing. So it's time to learn how money works by defending the indefensible, a new series I hope to launch depending on how well this video goes. So let's start with probably the biggest criticism of these companies, and that is that almost everybody that gets involved with them ends up losing money. Critics will throw up charts like this one that show that only a tiny percentage of participants in these schemes make any money at all. Or perhaps they'll show you income disclosure statements, which again, show that only a few dozen members from each one of these companies make the six-figure income new participants are promised. This is all fair enough, and in fact, MLM companies operating in the United States are required by law to produce these documents after a legal ruling mandated that they be more transparent with income expectations. Even still, these figures alone might not tell the entire story. You see, most people that join these schemes don't do so with the expectation of making a business out of them. Now, the companies themselves will normally say that these people are only interested in joining so that they can purchase the product for a discounted price which is available to the members. Take something like this weight loss shake from Herbalife, which is one of the largest MLMs operating today. The public retail price is admittedly a fair bit higher than the wholesale price they make available to their members. So. For someone that will be consuming these products frequently, it would make financial sense to just pay the membership up front and save the money in the long run. This is no different from, say, a Costco membership. And, if anything, Costco tends to have a very positive public image. So perhaps these companies are getting a bit of a bad rap here. Or at least that would be the case if it were the whole story. In reality, a lot of people sign up because they were pressured into it by an auntie, long lost friend, or a third cousin twice removed. Sometimes the best way to stop these people from blowing up your phone about their amazing new business opportunity is just to acquiesce and buy their damn sign-up pack. Sure, it will probably just end up collecting dust in your garage, but at least you don't have to deal with it anymore. Now in this situation, you have become a statistic. You are part of the 99% who join these companies and never make any money. Now of course this still isn't exactly what you would call an upstanding business practice but I would argue that it lies somewhere in between the horror stories that the critics will present and the fairy tales that the companies will tell. On one hand, the 99% of people involved in these schemes are not relentlessly sucked dry by a small group of bloodthirsty con artists, but on the other hand, that same 99% are not exactly super eager participants just looking for a great deal on protein powder. The reality of this issue, as with many others, lies somewhere in between what the two opposing sides will argue. But, this argument that new members are simply looking out for small discounts also raises one of the other major issues that critics have with MLMs, and that is that their products are extremely expensive for what they are. Using the same weight loss shake from earlier, we will find that, sure, the small discount you get as a member is great, but it still doesn't make the price anywhere close to competitive with other market alternatives. Now, the critics will say that the reason that most MLMs have their products priced like this is that they need big margins on their products in order to pay out the bonuses to all of their members at the top of the proverbial pyramid. Now, this is certainly part of it, but it's not the whole story. You see, most of these companies will market their products as premium alternatives, which is, as you know, very hard to measure. But, assuming that is the case, there are still regular market alternatives that are more expensive. Even beyond this, there are products sold by some of these companies that actually look like a relatively good value. Amway is one of the oldest and currently the largest MLM operating in the world today. The company started out by selling a range of cleaning products which actually marketed themselves as being concentrated and cost-effective alternatives to other regular products. This is just as true today as it was back then. Compared to most other concentrated household cleaning products, the Amway alternatives are either cheaper or very comparable. And this is also whilst not considering the discounts that are made available to the members. So how does this make sense then? 
The critics point out that MLM products need a massive markup so that money can naturally pass from the bottom of the pyramid to the top. So if the products don't actually have that markup, then this argument kind of breaks down, right? Well, maybe. But first, we need to consider one of the more central criticisms, and that is that ultimately, people are not sold on these products at all. So it really doesn't matter if the companies are selling overpriced weight loss shakes, bargain basement cleaning supplies, or even life insurance policies. And yes, there are MLMs that sell life insurance policies. No, no, no. All of that is irrelevant. What really matters is that the new members are told that they can make millions of dollars by joining these companies, when in reality, the business opportunity is stacked against them. So the obvious defense to this is that people do become rich in these schemes. There are hundreds of examples of people that are incredibly well off due to their involvement in these companies. But of course, the critics will argue that most don't become wealthy. And that is also fair. Even if we ignore the majority of people that sign up to these companies and do nothing, we will still find that most people involved end up losing money. And of those who do turn a profit, most would probably be better off working a minimum wage job at McDonald's. But at the end of the day, this is business. If you were to go out and start your own business doing your own thing tomorrow, there is a very good chance you would stand to lose a lot more money than a member of one of these companies. For every tale of someone losing a few thousand dollars by stacking up on vitamins, skincare, or leggings from one of these companies, there is a story about someone losing tens of thousands of dollars trying to open a cafe. Sure, most of the people who try to make businesses out of an MLM fail and end up losing money. But most people that try to make money with any business fail, and probably end up losing a lot more money. So, in a way, MLM companies are just offering people a chance to start a sales-based business with very little in the way of upfront investment or financial risk. And sure, the promises of easy riches are obviously grossly exaggerated, but to someone who realizes that starting a business is hard work, this is a genuine opportunity. An opportunity, mind you, not a guarantee an opportunity to build something without needing to get a second mortgage or a small loan of a million dollars. What's more is that you can start from day one, and if at any point you decide that the business is not going well, you can close shop without the stress of paying salaries or rent or suppliers or any of the other fun stuff that comes along with running our traditional business. Okay, now here is the reason why it's so important to understand this counterargument that these businesses put forward, because realistically, this is how they pitch their businesses these days. And what do you say to your critics? You say, yeah, but the majority of your distributors do not make any money. They make less than a thousand bucks in an entire year, no commissions in a year. I'd say a thousand bucks? That's a lot of money to a lot of people. Most people come in here for part-time income. They're not coming in here to recruit someone or build an organization. We know all the numbers. If you find yourself in a meeting for one of these companies, they are going to have an answer for every objection you have, which can make even the most staunch anti mlm -er think twice about diving in. Most people lose money? Well, everybody loses money when they become a member of Costco. And just like Costco, most of our members only shop with us very occasionally and have no interest in making this a business. This is actually great for you because you have an inbuilt pool of customers. Well, even most people that do this as a business end up losing money. Well, starting a business is hard, and we simply give people the opportunity to start their own business without the huge financial burden that comes with opening a cafe, let's say. Well, the products are overpriced. No, no. Some of our premium products are more expensive than the inferior budget alternatives you'll find at Walmart. But compared to other premium offerings, we are actually very competitive. What's more is that our everyday products are actually more economical than anything else on the market. These responses are all true and it's how most of these businesses present themselves these days. They know almost everybody has an opinion of them, so they try to reshape that opinion by actually working with the common criticisms they receive. And it's also the reason that products like these are priced cheaply. This is what people in marketing call a loss leader. It's a product that's priced very cheaply, sometimes even unprofitable, just to get people into the store in the hopes that they will end up spending more money on items that actually are profitable. MLMs like Amway will do this with low value items like their cleaning products here for the same kind of reason. They'll show it to potential new recruits to dispel the criticism of overpriced products, only to turn around and sell them overpriced products from the ranges that actually make them a lot of money. This adaption is what has allowed these companies to keep on growing despite the almost universal understanding that these businesses are kind of shady. So I'm not going to call these businesses an outright scam. That makes it too easy for these companies to pull some kind of objection handling nonsense that we've seen throughout this video. 
In fact, I will hold true to the new series and defend the indefensible by actually giving these companies a promotion. If you are looking to go into business for yourself and you are a skilled salesman that is willing to work on a commission only basis while also working to build and manage a team of commission only salesmen beneath you, then by all means, go ahead. But if you're not looking to start your own business or you're not a good salesman, don't let the people involved in these companies convince you that you are either. Now we will hopefully continue to defend the indefensible if this video does well by looking at the value that hedge funds add to society by doing nothing but moving huge piles of money around. But if you want to see accounting on a grand scale before we make that video, go check out our explanation as to how the Federal Reserve Bank became the most profitable organization in the world just last year. And as always, if you enjoy these videos, please consider liking and subscribing to keep on learning how money works.